This is a quick recap for exam test questions for employment based tests for PowerPoint 2010 and 13. They are pretty much the same. For 2007, I've done a separate video. Now, if you are really new to PowerPoint, I would highly recommend that you go to my channel and then go to the playlist and look for Microsoft PowerPoint, which you should see. So there's PowerPoint 2013 and you'll find three videos or four videos there that you can watch it and also you'll find the other one which is just saying Microsoft PowerPoint in here somewhere uh, where is it right there and it has the 2010 version so please go to it and watch the videos if you are really new to it for other people this video should be good enough that you can pass the test and get 80 percent and higher so let's get going uh, when I go to file from here you'll get lots of questions in relation to opening a new file to so go to new and then double click on blank or any of the designs they want you to choose there are lots of designs and this is 2013 in 2010 it does a little differently to open files you go to open and then from here you can choose an existing file that you already have a lot of time it will be listed here or you can browse to wherever the file is saving a file so you click on save and then it will ask you a question to give it a name and then you save it or they might ask you to do a save as which is the file has already been saved let's give it a new name or they might ask you to share it and email it to somebody so you just click it and the file will be added as an email or they might ask you to present it online so this is a really neat feature uh, by which you get a link and you can present it live and people can join in the presentation so you just have to go through the process uh, they may ask you this might be a newer question in the new version and in the export you get options to export it to create a video and you can choose the settings so this is all questions right in the file that they can ask you uh, and you can close your file if they want you to close PowerPoint now another major question here is about printing so when I click on print you can choose the printer and the number of copies and a lot of other questions will be related to this option here where it says full page slide because they'll say only print handouts and they might say print four handouts per page so you click it and you need to choose four slides horizontal handout or vertical if they say to print only outline so there was the outline option or they want you to print notes pages so these are all these questions that can be asked or color change it to black and white or grayscale so they can ask you that question by default it will print all the slides but you can change it to custom range and then you can type the slide numbers like one comma five which is one two five sorry the dash slash eight so it will print one, four, one, two, three, four, five, and then the number eight. So a lot of options under the print, four to five questions that could be coming from here. So that's all the stuff under file. They might ask you a question about adding some buttons in the quick access toolbar. So this is known as the quick access toolbar, and you just choose the buttons from here if it's not here they might ask you to you may need to go to more commands there's a good chance the button they want you to add is up here quick access toolbar and these are tabs and the ribbons so I'll just go to the next slide a lot of questions in relation to adding slides and managing slides so if I go to if they say add a new slide but they'll tell you a particular type so they might say add a to content or the title and content so you need to make sure you choose the right one they might ask you to delete a slide so you can right click here and you will get the delete option and I believe uh, there is, used to be a delete button here I think they've removed it from here so you can also do the deleting from view and then slide sorter so that you can see all the slides and then you can right click on it and you get the option to delete things and from here you can also rearrange slides so if I wanted this slide before I can drag it 
and move it in the front. So you can rearrange the slides as you want it. And I can double click or I can go back to view normal. So they might ask you these questions too. Go to view and then normal or under view you can go to outline view. And they also have this notes page button. So when I click it I can see my notes and I can add the notes there. So all of this. So in the exam you will always find a lot of time the question has the answer view something. So you can do that very easily. So I'll just come back to normal. So that's about adding, deleting, and, and moving slides. I'll just come back to home. Now they might ask you a question to change layout. That is, this is a two content slide. And if they say change it to single content. So in the layout, there's a button called title and content. And that will change it to a single content. Um, there might be questions about format. So if I highlight this, you can change the size, the font type, make it bold, italics, all of that stuff. But they could ask you something called shadow, this S symbol. So make sure that you know what those symbols mean because in the exam, you will not get that explanation. So when I click it, there's like a shadow to it. And this button is for character spacing. So I click it and I can make it very loose. So it's kind of far away or I can make it normal. Uh, you might get questions about centering. They might ask you to change the bullets or numbering. So those are common questions. Uh, you might get a questions where they want you to convert your data into a smart art. So you see if I choose one of these things, you see it's starting to change in the background. So it's converting my data, so all the bullets, into a smart art. So you can get that question. Now, if you ever get certain questions and you're not sure where it is, you will always find yourself in the place where the things need to happen and look for the tools button. And there's a good chance you will find a lot of the answers in here. And they'll always give you words like they'll say change the shape style to something or the word art style to something. So they'll always give you a clue as to where it might be. If you don't remember things, try to right click and try to find the answers. Let's come back to home. Um, so I think that's pretty much good there. Um, the ribbons and tabs, these are all tabs um, that you can add uh, tabs and ribbons to. I've done a video, I don't think so. this is an exam question, but if you wanted to watch uh, my part one in which I talk about how you can create your own tabs in which you can add your own buttons if you wanted to watch it. Um, running slideshow, so if I want it, I can go to the slideshow button and start it from beginning. It's an exam question. Or they might ask you to slide, start it from a current slide, exam question. Or they might say, run a custom slideshow. So when I click here, there's that plan A, which is a custom slideshow. And you can go to custom shows. And you can create your own custom show. That is, if I had 17 to 18 slides and I wanted to create a special slideshow where not all of them are there. So I go to new, I give it a name, and then I can choose which slides I want to add. So now when I run this slideshow C, it will only have those slides. And they are listed under here. So that's custom show. And you might get a question about printing just the custom slideshow. So if I go to file and then go to print, and from the custom range, I can choose plan C. So it only print that. So a very handy feature under slideshow. You can add notes to your slides. Uh, so I'm just on the bottom. There is the notes button. You can add the notes there or you can go to view and then the notes page and then put whatever words they want you to type there. Not sure. um, we talked about all the view, normal and all of that stuff. There is a new one that's been added called reading view. So under view, there is this reading view, which is uh, it runs the slideshow, but not in full screen. We can see, still see all the transition, but not in the slideshow mode. And under view, I'll do one more, which is called the fit to window, which is if I increase my zoom, so I'm just using the plus sign on the right hand corner, 
and I hit fit to window, it fits it in the screen. That's under view, fit to window. Next slide talks about printing, which we talked about. Uh, next thing will be questions about uh, designing and adding one of these themes. So, you know, there are so many options here. Um, and they'll usually tell you which one they want you to apply. So they'll say, change it to this one, Berlin. And they'll give you the name or they'll tell you it's the second row and fourth column. So you click on it to add the design theme or they might even ask you to do variations of it and they'll tell you which variation they want you to use if they did say that and this I think is only in 2013. You can change the slide size from widescreen to standard and if any questions about formatting background comes up you can change it from here and then change it to whatever they want it. Solid fill, gradient fill. So make sure you read the question properly and then choose whatever they want you to do and then that's it. It applied to all. That means it will apply to all of them. All right, moving on. Transitions. So that's under the transition tab. That is, you know, when you have slides and you need to decide how are my, my slides going to change. So they might say the transition to slide should be push. So that means they'll come from the bottom up. Uh, you can go to effect options and then choose whether you want it to come from left to right. So you can choose that and then just make sure you hit apply to all. And this duration, when I point to it, it says specify the length of the transition. That means how long should it take to transition? And you can change that number from there. All right, next thing is about animations. Animations are when I have uh, lots of bulleted points, I can control how they show up whether you want it all together or one line at a time. So that's under animation. And they'll say, you know, use the animation from the drop down button here. You see there is a section for entrance, there is a section for emphasis, and there is a section for exit. So they'll tell you whether they want you to apply the entrance, then choose it, and then it's added. And there's a lot of effects that can go into it. So if they ask some specific things about it, in, so you'll see it in the effect options. And if they want you to add more, you can add animation and then you can keep on adding more here if you needed it. Uh, one of the interesting feature buttons they've added is the animation painter, which is if you apply some lots of interesting animation here, you can actually use this button to copy the animation and apply it to some other boxes. So it's an easy way of doing things. And this animation pane, you might get some questions about here where the window may be open or they might say remove a animation. So you have to turn on the animation pane and then you can I mean, right click on it and you'll see the option to remove. Or you can go to effect options where there is some minor details that can be affected like sounds and whether you want the animations to come one letter at a time or one word at a time. So those can be applied through the animation pane. I'll just close this here and we'll go to the next one um, which is about rehearse timing. So if you want your slideshow to run automatically you go to slideshow and then you turn on the rehearse timing and on the left hand side you'll see a button and you have to keep on hitting next, 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 next and at the end it will say 18 seconds. Let's finish it up. So that means the slideshow will run automatically. So I'm just going to go through this quickly and I'll start it just to show you the initial part and there is the arrow. So after every second I can change it. So I quickly went through the animation because I want to show you under view, slide sorter, you will see there is a timing underneath every slide. So they might ask you to say that uh, on this slide it's three seconds, change it to two. So due to make the changes, you go to the transition and you'll see the timing here. So this is two seconds and 85 milliseconds and I can reduce it to two. Now you may get a question which says that two seconds for all slides. So you change it and it apply to all, all the slides will have two seconds on it. So that's the question that you may get. Um, I think anything else in it? Yeah, under view, 
or sorry, slideshow, there is a button called hide slide. So I may get a question about that. That means I want to hide this from my presentation. Uh, if they ask you a question which says that uh, loop your slideshow. So once you've set your rehearse timing, you can go to set up slideshow and then you can loop it until escape. So that way your slideshow will keep on turning. You don't have to do anything. And you can turn on the presenter view, which is if you have uh, a laptop and a projector, you will be able to see your notes on your screen and the people will not be able to see that notes on the projector screen. So that's the question and that's on the slideshow. Use presenter view. And you can also record a slideshow so that you can put your uh, sound and narrations on it. And the present online button is also here, which was also under the file. So you can do that. It's a free service from Microsoft. Pretty cool. All right, next thing, I uh, just want to quickly talk about how do you insert objects. Again, you want to know more about it, please go and watch my other videos. So here I can click it to insert table, choose how many do I want, they will tell you exactly. Insert chart, choose the style they tell you to choose, go through the process. Smart art, picture, clip art, online pictures, or a video. All of these are exam questions and depending on the version you have to take. So next I've got this chart. I just want to point out some of the um, options you should be aware of. Now I think this chart tools may be a little different in 2010. In 2010 you might have a design button, layout and format. I think if I remember correctly. So in the design they will ask you questions about changing chart style. So you see when I point to it, it always tells me and in the exam you will be able to see that style 5. In some of the other ones, it's not there, but here you will see it. Or uh, they might ask you to edit data. So you'll see the button there, which is you can change the numbers or names on it or change chart type. That means you want to change a chart to a different one. And some of these in 2010 might be on the left hand side. They might also ask you questions about chart layouts. So you can choose what style of a layout do you want. And again, they'll tell you which one to use, layout 5, layout 6, so be careful about reading that. And they might ask you to add chart elements like in this 2013, it's here, that they might say add a chart title, uh, they might say add grid lines. So whenever you get these type of questions, you know you need to go to the chart tools and then look for it or the legend and things. In 2010, if I believe these buttons will be in the layout section of the chart tools. So just go to it and you'll see all of these options lined up one next to the other. Table, um, again when I click on the table I get table tools so they might tell you to change the style to whatever style. You see the words medium style to accent for. So you may get confused when you hear about it but you look for the word style, so that will make it easy. They might ask you to affect the borders, so you do it from here, or effects. So you will always find these things in the table tools. And in the layout part of the table tools, you have buttons to delete table, delete rows, or insert rows and columns. And if you don't remember, remember right click. When you right click, you get options to insert and delete. In 2010, it might be up here, insert and delete rather than up there. Uh, if I highlight everything, I can make it center vertically and also centered. You can change the cell text directions, make it stacked. So again, all these types of questions, um, you can be ready for it. Just understand table tools, anything to do with that, you'll find it in there. Moving on, I've added like a a smart art so I get smart art tools and they might ask you to change the smart art styles layouts uh, they might ask you to reset graphics um, they might ask you to change colors and you see when I point to it the name comes up colorful range accent colors three to four so they can do that uh, sometimes they might ask you to change the color on just this one and sometimes they might tell you something simple like just change it to one. Sometimes they might give you combinations of colors. So I'll just go over that quickly. So I'll just right click here 
and um, think a couple of different ways of doing this. So I'll go to fill. So you'll see this bucket. And if they say any of these colors, just change it to that. But sometimes they might give you some numbers. So you have to go to gradient, more gradients. And in this, in the gradient, you have to go and add these numbers. So from the color, I go to more colors. And then you have to put the numbers in here whatever numbers they give you and then you click OK and then you click add and then you go and add another one so this is the way you add it three different times to affect the gradients now I wouldn't bother too much about it but I just want to give you a certain indication where you need to go to answer that test question if you had time you could do that sometimes they might ask you to just select three of these so you click one hold the control and then click the other ones because they don't want you to select all of them. Um, again, right click, always think about that. It's a good way. And you might get questions about group and they might say ungroup it. So that's all you need to do. Right click and ungroup it. You might even get it under format. There is the grouping button. You can rotate things and you can also affect the alignment. So that's all in the tools option where you can have that shape styles what art style. So there's a lot of things you can be doing in there. All right, next thing is uh, we talked about inserting pictures, but I think I'll do it here. So I can use this button here, or you can go to insert. And even from here, you know, you can add tables, pictures, smart arts, charts, all of those things can be added from here. I can go to picture, double click on the folder. Usually the picture will be right there and add it. Now you get picture tools, so just remember, they might ask you to about picture styles, so you just change it to whatever style they tell you. They might ask you to affect the borders or effects or picture layout. You go ahead and do that, or they might ask you to rotate something. And the color options are here too. So um, just be uh, familiar with the notion of the tools and see how you can navigate it, and all of those stuffs are there. Uh, insert word art so you go to the word art and then pick whichever one they tell you and then type your text now you get tools for it and they might ask you to add text effects reflections and they'll tell you what kind full reflection or half reflection they might ask you to do something with shape effects so the answers are in the question so you don't have to worry too much about it and I can delete it. Uh, inserting arrows, so in the shapes, they might tell you to add the down arrow. And sometimes they might tell you either on a shape or the words, they want you to add actions to it. So if you go to insert while it is highlighted, click on the word action. And they might say that make it play sound. So you choose it. Or they might say run a, a macro or run a program or hyperlink to a slide or a file or a website so you can do that uh, and if they had something about instead of a click they want you to make it so that anytime somebody moves the mouse over it to play sound then you go to the mouse over and then it will play that sound so that's inserting actions on something uh, next thing talking about headers and footers which is also under insert header and footer and then I can choose date and time. If they tell me, they'll tell you what kind of date or they'll say leave the default. Or they might ask you to put a fixed date. This is like tomorrow, it will be tomorrow's date. Fixed means this date all the time. You can choose to put a slide number. You can also add a copyright or in, sorry, footer, which can be a copyright or whatever. And you can also get a question which says don't show it on the title slide. So these will be all individual questions. They will never lump it all together at least that's what I've seen uh, they may always change it and then I hit apply to all now you've got the question right and depending on the theme we've chosen it will be putting things such as the slide number the date and then the footer so those are questions about header and footer um, and the insert you can always insert symbols they might ask you to add special symbols or equations you can add it from here you can highlight something and add a hyperlink to that word and you can put a website there. OK. 
Okay. Next is to talk about Slide Masters. So under View, I have this button here called Slide Masters. Now Slide Masters are slides which are going to affect all your slides. So say under Home, I wanted to show you this to you is that there is this title and content. There is this two content and all of these slides when I choose them I can go to the master slide of that layout and when I make changes to it all the slides which were using that style will be affected. So if I go to view slide master so now I'm in this single column slide. So if I highlight this title and say I change the color by going to home and I make it red and I come back to slide master and I close it. Now all the slides which were based on that will be red. So you can see on the left hand side and that's the idea of slide master. So they can ask you any questions about it. So just understand where to go and then they will usually tell you to make changes right here. Hide background graphics or something like that or change the theme to something else or a color combination and I can close the master view. Uh, another question regarding hand, a master slide will be under view handout master so they'll, they'll click it and they might say that um, change the slide number to bold so you the slide numbers goes on the bottom and you can see the pound symbol you click on it and go to home and make it bold and that's the idea or they might ask you to do something else but just look for it here and it might be there and then close it same way view notes master if there was a question about that um, Insert, there is this option here called Store, where you can go and you can download apps which add functionality to your PowerPoint. Now, I think this is only in 2013, so they have some free ones and there are some which are like paid apps that you can add to your PowerPoint. So I think I've covered pretty much everything. I just wanted to highlight uh, two things here under File. There's this info part where you can go and change the names and put your company name and everything. And you can also protect your presentation from here by adding a password. Um, and, and under review, you have questions about um, maybe under spelling and adding comments and things. So that can be done from here. So I think I've pretty much covered all the important things you need to know. Um, I wish you all the best and uh, if you need to know more please go to the other videos where I've talked about these in more details.